Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. To stay in the game, our contestants need to score as few points as possible. And the way they do that is by giving those obscure answers that everyone else forgets. We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. All our contestants have to do is find those little-known answers that as few of our 100 people gave as possible. So, for example, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Arnold Schwarzenegger films as they could, and we found out that... 88 of them said The Terminator, an obvious answer that would score you a horribly high 88 points. However, only... 31 of them said Kindergarten Cop, a lesser-known film that would score you a respectably low 31 points. Now, occasionally, there are even some answers that none of our 100 people could name. So, for example, none of them said Stay Hungry. That would have been a truly pointless Arnold Schwarzenegger film that would score you... <laughs> ..absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's what you want. And if you find any of those, then we will add £250 to today's jackpot. So, before we go any further, let's meet today's players. <laughs> George and Katie, welcome back. We give everyone two chances to reach the Pointless final, and today is your final chance. Can you remind us how you did last time? Not so well, unfortunately, mainly down to me. So I'm hoping to do better this time. So my granddad, who I call Opa, will not stop speaking to me. Opa? Yeah, Opa. That's nice. German. German. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not German. We were in Germany when Grandmother discovered she might be called Grandmother, so we adopted the German. <laughs> Omar and Umpa, Umpa, I guess. <laughs> anyway, well, best of luck. Lovely to have you back. Thank you. Um, on to our next pair, Chris and Dan. You are the second pair today. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? We're best mates. We've been best mates all our lives, um, and we even play in the same football team together now. Best friends? Well, let's hope you'll still be best friends at the end of the show. Welcome to the show. OK, on to our third pair. We welcome back Pete and Andy, who are football buddies as well. Uh, remind us how you did last time. We did OK. One of us a bit weaker than the other, but... You we got were... a pointless. <laughs> I did get a pointless, and one of us didn't. I got one. <laughs> I got one. You did? Yeah. You got one? That's not bad. I, one. I think you also got 100 as well. I think it was the other 186 <laughs> that might have let us yeah. down a bit. Oh, well, never mind. Well, better luck today. And welcome back. And on to our fourth pair, Ken and Hazel. Welcome back. Remind us how you two know each other. We are living with and her. We met in a pub. Did you really? Yes. Uh, Hazel sold me £1,200 worth of rubbish that I didn't actually need. Well, well that kind of pub. What, yes. It's obviously just <laughs> hot stereos and things like that from cars. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been pestered by ladies like you, Hazel, in the past. <laughs> Very good. Well, welcome back to the show. Lovely to have you here. Best of luck. And finally, we have Ruth and Pauline. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? We met eight years ago when our children started nursery. Oh, that's nice. Very good. Your children still friends? Yep. Yes. Are they at school together still? Just. Yeah, slight, slightly different in, in age groups with a cut-off, so no. they're at different schools, but yes. Well, welcome to you both, and I hope you do fantastically well this afternoon. As ever, there is one final person I have to introduce to you. He is the man with all the pointless facts and figures. He is my pointless friend. It's Richard. <laughs> how are you, Richard? I'm very well. How are you? I'm very well. As always, you don't know any of the questions or any of the answers that are coming up on today's show. They're all in here. Uh, so what I'll do at the end of each round is take you through all the pointless answers. Those are the things that none of our hundreds said. So if you're playing along at home as well, you'll find out exactly how well you've done. I'll also take you through the most obvious answers, you know, the, the, the ridiculous ones that people shouldn't say. I think question three today is a very tricky one. Question, question three. three. So round three is going to yeah. be a tough one, but it'll be a tough one for everyone. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yesterday's finalists, Saeed and Tony, won the jackpot of £5,000. So today's jackpot total stands at £1,000. <laughs> there it is. But remember, if you find some pointless answers along the way, each one of them will add £250 to that amount. Let's play Pointless. So, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. You will score one point for every one of the 100 people that gave that same answer. And remember, this is pointless. So, you're trying to find the least well-known answers and score the lowest number of points. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will, I'm afraid, score the maximum of 100 points. So, do be careful. If you do give an incorrect answer, this will happen. You really don't want to see that. 
At the end of the round, your combined scores will be totaled up and the highest scoring pair will be eliminated. Only two pairs will make it through to our head-to-head -head semi final so the pressure is really on. OK, our first category is... Games. Games. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first? OK, whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what our first question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many spaces on a Monopoly board as they could. Richard, can you elaborate on that at all? Yeah, we're looking for any of the spaces you can land on on the original London Monopoly board. None of the sort of new ones, the special editions or anything like that. And by space, I mean if your piece can land on it, that's a legitimate answer. Right. George and Katie, before the show, you all drew lots, and today it turns out you will be starting us off. George, what are you going to say? Something came straight to mind. Fenchurch Street. Remember, you are looking to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Fenchurch Street. It's the right answer. Oh, it's good, it's good. Look at that, 12. <laughs> that, of course, means that 12 of our 100 people said Fenchurch Street. On to our next pair, Dan and Chris. Dan, what are you going to say? Uh, I'm going to go for Vine Street. OK, we're looking for nice, obscure spaces on the Monopoly board. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Vine Street. It's good. It's going down, look at that. Oh, it's good, nine. <laughs> yep, that means that nine of our 100 people said Vine Street. OK, we are looking for spaces on the Monopoly board. More obscure, the better. On to our third pair, Pete and Andy. Pete, what are you going to say? I'll go for Northumberland Avenue. We want to score as little as possible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Northumberland Avenue. It's a correct answer. It's good. Very good, look at that, nine. That means nine of our 100 people said Northumberland Avenue. I have to, I can't fault you on grouping. Look at that, we have two scores of nine. And George and Katie, who scored what I thought was a fabulously low score of 12, are currently our highest scorers. <laughs> anyway, we move on to our fourth pair, Hazel and Ken. Hazel, what are you going to go for? I'm going for Baker Street. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Baker Street. Oh, no! Bad luck. Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer. That means I'm afraid you score the maximum of 100 points. Great news for George and Katie, but bad <laughs> news for Hazel and Ken. On to our fifth and final couple. Ruth. I'm going to go for the electric company. Oh, very good. We'd all forgotten about the electric company. Let's see how many of our 100 people also forgot about that. How many of them said the electric company? It's good. I feel this is going to be a good one. Down it goes, 20. <laughs> that means 20 of our 100 people remembered the electric company more than remembered Vine Street. Very strange. OK, well, we are halfway through the round. Let's see how we're doing on scores. Well, Chris and Dan and Pete and Andy looking pretty clever on nine points each. They are both our lowest scoring pairs. However, Ken and Hazel looking particularly mm. vulnerable there on 100 points. You've got to hope everyone else scores as high as possible and you've got to try and see if you can find a pointless answer maybe on the next pass. OK, we're going to come back up the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we are looking for spaces on a Monopoly board. Pauline, your score is currently 20. Obviously, Ken and Hazel's high score of 100 means you want to be scoring 79 or less to be absolutely safe. What are you going to go for? Well, I'm going to follow Ruth's lead, I think, and go for waterworks. Very good. Why not? You're going to go for the waterworks. There is the red line. You have to come below that red line to be absolutely safe. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the waterworks. Oh, you're through. Very good. That means 24 out of our 100 people said the waterworks. That takes your score up to 44. Ken, you are our current front runners on the scoreboard. 
that means you're in danger of being kicked off at the end of this round. So remember, we are looking for spaces on a Monopoly board. I think I'll go for Pentonville Road. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Pentonville Road. It's the right answer. It's good. Look at that. It's eight. <laughs> Only eight of our 100 people said Pentonville Road, and that takes your score to 108. Now, it's good that it does, because it keeps things exciting. It means all our remaining pairs could still be eliminated if they score, in Andy and Pete's case and Chris and Dan's case, if they score a maximum of 100 points. On to our next pair, Andy and Pete. Andy, what are you going to say? I think I'm going to try and play it safe here and go for Fleet Street. You're going to go for Fleet Street. Ken and Hazel are our high scorers on 108. To be absolutely safe, you want to be scoring 98 or less. Here is the red line. I'm going to see if I can reach it. Whoa, look at that, the safety line. <laughs> if you go above this, then you will be the pair with the highest score and therefore in danger. But if you get anything below the line, then you are definitely through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Fleet Street. You're safe. Oh, oh, down it goes. Ten! <laughs> well done, Andy. That means only ten of our 100 people said Fleet Street. That gives you a total of 19. Now, Chris and Dan. Uh, I'm going to go Angel Islington. The Angel Islington. Ken and Hazel are still our high scorers at the moment. To be absolutely safe, you want to be scoring 98 or less. There is that red line just below the pink. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Angel Islington. You're through. Oh, it's good. That means 22 of our 100 people said the Angel Islington. That takes your total up to 31. Our final pair, Katie. We are looking for spaces on a Monopoly board. OK. I'm really not sure of anything at this stage, <laughs> um, but I'm thinking Pal Mal. You're going to say Pal Mal. You're currently on 12. You have to score 95 or less to avoid being the highest scorers. There is the red line. If you're below that red line, you're through to the next round. If you're above that red line, you will be leaving the show. How many of our 100 people said Pal Mal? It's good. You're through. Look at that. There. Down it goes to 29. That means that 29 of our 100 people said Pal Mal, which brings your total up to 41. So that's the end of round one, and the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Ken and Hazel. Richard, what should they have said if they'd wanted to remain in the show? Well, as you say, Ken gave us actually the lowest score of anybody in that round with Pentonville Road, but there were, uh, there were no pointless answers, but three very, very low answers. You could have had income tax, which two people would have said, Super tax. Super tax costs you less than income tax. Never quite understood that. So not that super. I, uh... And just visiting as well, which is obviously around the jail, that would have got you one point as well. Ken and Hazel, do you want to have a try and hazard a guess at the, uh, the worst answers, the most obvious answers? I would think Mayfair was quite high, was it? Mayfair was quite high in that it was top. It was yeah. good. That's the worst answer you could have given. The second worst answer, Old Kent Road. Oh, was it? Yeah. Interesting. And the third one was Hart Lane was third. Thanks, Richard. Well, Ken and Hazel, that was your second and final chance on the show. I mean, you just don't have that pointless knowledge, clearly, to get through to the final. But uh, thanks so much, Blaine. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you. <laughs> for the remaining four pairs, though, it's time for round two. <laughs> OK, guys, the round two category is... Film. OK, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? Yeah. Right, whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> Remember, pointless is all about scoring the fewest points possible. So you are looking for the answers that the fewest of our 100 people said. 
OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many feature films starring Leonardo DiCaprio as they could. Could you be any more specific than that, Richard? Yeah, quite a tricky one, this, I think. Any film, any feature film made for the cinema for which Leonardo DiCaprio has an acting credit. We're not going to include short films, documentaries made for TV films, anything like that. Things where he gets a credit. Vocal performances do count, though. So acting credits in feature films, and there are 20 on the list. Thank you, Richard. And it's those really obscure ones, obviously, that we're going to try and find. Right, Katie and George, you're first. Katie. I'm going to go for one of his first films, I think, which is What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Very good. Wow. Let's see how many of our 100 people said What's Eating Gilbert Grape? It's the right answer. It's good. Look at that. Down it goes. Ten points. That means, of course, that only 10 of our 100 people said What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and that scores Katie and George 10 points. A nice low score to kick us off this second round. On to our next pair, Chris and Dan. Chris, what are you going to say? My one is also one of his early films. It's called This Boy's Life. This Boy's Life. Very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said This Boy's Life. It's correct. Down it goes. Down it goes. Very good. Pointless. That, of course, means that none of our 100 people said this boy's life, and it adds £250 to today's jackpot. Our total is now £1,250. <laughs> so, Richard... This Boy's Life. Yeah, well done, Chris. It's a, it's a great film, This Boy's Life. 1993 also has Robert De Niro in it. It's a wonderful film and a, a great answer. Our first pointless of the day. On to our third pair. We're looking for feature films starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Pete, what are you going to go for? I don't know many of his films at all, but I might take a complete stab in the dark and think he may have been a voice in Shrek. Remember, of course, if it's an incorrect answer, you, you will score the maximum of 100 points. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Shrek. Oh! Well, that was a very brave stab in the dark. Unfortunately, it was a wrong stab in the dark, which means you do score that maximum of 100 points. You are now our highest scorers. On to our fourth pair, Ruth and Pauline. Ruth, what are you going to go for? Well, this is just not one of my favourite categories, but I think I'll go for The Beach. OK, we're looking for feature films starring Leonardo DiCaprio. You're going to go for The Beach. Let's see how many of our 100 people said The Beach. It's the right answer. 48. Not bad. That means that 48 of our 100 people said The Beach, and that scores you 48 points. OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's see where we are on the scoreboard. Obviously, Chris and Dan are doing fantastically well there with their pointless answer of zero. You keep up that low scoring and you're definitely going through to the next round. Oh, dear, Pete and Andy looking a little bit dangerous there on 100. You've just got to hope that everyone else scores 100 on this next round and that you score as low as possible. Right, we're going to come back up the line. Will the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, Pauline, we're looking for feature films starring Leonardo DiCaprio. OK, um, there's two that I'm thinking of, but I'm going to pick Romeo and Juliet. Very good. You're going to go with Romeo and Juliet. There's the red line there. If you're below that red line, you're definitely through to the next round. If you're above that red line, you could still be in danger. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Romeo and Juliet. You're safe. That means 14 of our 100 people said Romeo and Juliet. That takes your score up to 62. Phew, you're yeah. safe. <laughs> OK, we are looking for feature films starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Andy and Pete, your turn. By some margin, you are our highest scorers. You have to be looking for a pointless answer here, or at least as low a score as you can. I Andy. don't think I'm going to come up with a pointless answer, but I think the most obscure... DiCaprio film that I can come up with is Catch Me If You Can. Catch Me If You Can. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's the right answer. <laughs> that 
That's not bad. That means that 30 of our 100 people said, catch me if you can. That takes your score up to 130. I'm afraid that means you are definitely eliminated at the end of this round because you are so far ahead that even if Dan and Chris and George and Katie score 100 points, they still won't overtake your high score. But for the remaining pairs, there might be some more pointless answers out there, and each one of those will add £250 to our jackpot. So, Dan and Chris, what's it going to be? I'm going to go for Blood Diamond. Blood Diamond, very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Blood Diamond. It's good. It's not bad. Look at that. Down it goes. 16. That means 16 of our 100 people said Blood Diamond. That takes your score up to 16. OK, we're looking for feature films starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Alexander, George. I don't care. <laughs> Titanic! <laughs> well done, come on. <laughs> Let's live a little, as they said on the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Titanic. 88! <laughs> that means... 88 of our 100 people said Titanic. It's good enough. That takes your score up to 98. You're safe. You're sailing into the next round. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair of the highest score, I'm afraid, Pete and Andy. Never mind. Bad <laughs> luck, guys. It just wasn't your, wasn't your area, I guess. Schwarzenegger, yep. DiCaprio, <laughs> no. <-oo. laughs> Pretty boys. Not yeah. interested. Oh, okay. Richard, what other answers were there in there? There were six pointless answers. These are the answers that none of our 100 people could remember. There's Celebrity, which is the Woody Allen movie uh, from 1998. He was in that. That was pointless. Critters 3, the um, much-hyped follow-up to Critters 1 and 2, that was Leo's <laughs> first ever film. Marvin's Room, which, uh, again, is De Niro. And there's three others. Poison Ivy with Drew Barrymore, that was a pointless answer, nobody gave that. This Boy's Life we've already had from Chris. And Total Eclipse, which was a, a movie with David Hewlis, which I have to admit I've never heard of. We've already had the three worst possible answers. Pete and Andy gave us uh, Catch Me If You Can, which was third. Second, Ruth said The Beach. And the <laughs> top answer, George, not giving a care, said uh, Titanic, which got 88. Pete and Andy, that was your second and final chance on the show. You clearly just didn't have that pointless Leonardo DiCaprio knowledge. It's been great having you on the show. Thanks so much for playing. Thanks ever so much. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's time for round three. Now, obviously, only two pairs will make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so this is your final chance. All of you need to find those low-scoring answers to stay in the game. The round three category is... Words. So who's going to go first, who's going to go second? Yeah. Right, whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Let's find out what the question's going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words that you can make out of... Purple. Richard, explain this to me. Yeah, I want to get your brain thinking in a slightly different way. We're essentially looking for any word of three letters or more that you can make from the letters of the word purple. You don't need to use all the letters. Obviously, you can't use one letter twice, but it's using any of the letters, three letter words or more. No abbreviations or proper nouns, but apart from that, anything that's in the Oxford English Dictionary that you can make out of the letters of the word purple. Good luck. <laughs> there's there's one word we're not allowing and that's purple, <laughs> because that's, okay. all, that's already been made out of the letters of the word purple, essentially. I see, I see what they've done. Remember, you need to score the fewest points, so you need to give me the answers that the fewest of our 100 people said. George and Katie, you are first. George. OK, list three letters, pup. Very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said pup. It's good. Oh, it's good, 30. That means 30 of our 100 people said pup. That means George and Katie score 30. OK, on to our next pair, Dan and Chris. Dan, OK, we are looking for words that you can make out of the letters of purple. What are you going to go for? Uh, I hope it's a word. Going to slightly similar. Um, I'm going to go pep. Pep, as in a pep talk. Let's see how many of our 100 people said pep. Oh, it's good. Down to eight. That means eight of our 100 people said pep. OK, we are looking for words that you can make out of purple. 
The more obscure, the better, and they have to be three letters at least. On to our third pair, Pauline, what are you going to say? I, I'm going to go for a four-letter one, Pearl, P-U-R-L. P-U-R-L. If it isn't a word, of course, you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Pearl. It's good. It's very good. Look at that. Down it goes to eight. <laughs> that means eight of our 100 people said Pearl, and it scores you eight points. Richard, Pearl. Yeah, Pearl, essentially, it's a term used in knitting or embroidery, as in knit one, pearl one sort of thread. Very good. I've just learnt something. <laughs> OK, well, we are halfway through the round. Let's see where we are on the scoreboard. Doing incredibly well with a low score of eight is Ruth and Pauline and Chris and Dan. If you can keep up those low scores, you're cruising through to the next round. I'm afraid, though, George and Katie looking a little bit dangerous there on 30. You've got to try and find a really low score and hope all the others score high. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for words that you can make out of the letters of purple. OK, Ruth, you are currently on eight. The high score is George and Katie on 30. So to be absolutely safe, you want to be scoring 21 or less. What are you going to give me? Lure, L-U-R-E. Lure, L-U-R-E. Let's see where that red line is. There we are. To be absolutely safe, you want to be coming in below that red line. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Lure. It's correct. Oh. <laughs> that means 46 of our 100 people said Lure, and that takes your total up to 54. You are now our high scorers. OK, on to our next pair, Chris and Dan. Our high scorers, I say, Ruth and Pauline on 54. To be safe, you want to be coming in at 45 or less with your answer. We are looking for words that you can make out of the letters of purple. OK, I was going to play lure myself, um, so that's a bit annoying, but I'll try rule, R-U-L-E. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Rule, there's the red line. You have to come in below that red line to be absolutely certain of going on to the next round. It's correct. You're safe. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That means that 39 of our 100 people said rule. That takes your score up to 47, and it means you are safe and through to the next round. On to our third pair, Katie. To save your skin, you have to score 23 or less, otherwise you will be eliminated at the end of this round. OK, we are looking for words that you can make out of the letters of purple. What's it going to be, Katie? OK, um, this is a difficult one to go last on. It really is. But I'm going to go for pulp. This is your second and last chance to get through to the head-to-head. -head. You have got to get below this red line here, otherwise you'll be leaving the game right now. Let's see how many of our 100 people said pulp. Oh, I just hope they're not Jarvis Cocker fans, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Down it comes. Down it comes. You've done it! <laughs> that means that only 10 of our 100 people said pulp. That brings your total up to 40, but that's bad news, I'm afraid, for Ruth and Pauline. I'm so sorry. You are our high scorers, and I'm afraid that means you will be leaving at the end of this round. That was tough, that one, wasn't it? It was a wee bit, yes. Oh, dear. Do you know what? I looked at that when I said... I was staring at the board. I couldn't make a single word. When George said pop, I thought, ooh. <laughs> Didn't see that there. Are you thinking of others now? No, I think what I'm thinking of is what makes it worse is I'm studying English at university. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, you've done very well. Anyhow, Richard, what else could they have come up with if they'd wanted to stay in the game? Well, believe it or not, there are actually 30 words in the Oxford English Dictionary that you can make out of the letters of the word purple, and uh, five of them were pointless. Uh, if we take a look, the first one is pulper which is the only uh, anagram of purple that's there. That's a, a machine for grinding coffee beans. Puler, obviously, yeah. one who pules. 
I think it's a pewter is to wine, isn't it? To whinge and wine. And a pewter is somebody oh, yes. who does that. Yeah. Uh, I say yes, like I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a pool or pool. One who whinges. Oh, pool is, yes. uh, is, is, is a coin. It's an old coin. There's a couple more. Lui. It's obviously, as we all know now, that you can see you're annoyed not, not, not getting it. It's the, it's the currency of Romania. <laughs> well, you'll know that. And re is a corded fabric. You're exactly right. The worst answers you possibly could have gone for. We've already had a couple. Chris gave us rule, which was the third worst answer. That was the third most popular answer. The second most stated answer was what Ruth gave us, which is lure. And guys, do you want to have a guess what, what was the worst answer you could have gone for? Pure. Any idea? Pure. 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 That's exactly right. Pure is the worst answer. 59. Thanks, Richard. OK, Ruth and Pauline, you've wasted one of your chances to get through to the pointless final, so we have to say goodbye to you for today, but we'll see you next time for your last chance. Thank you so much for playing. Thanks, great. Thank But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. So well done, Chris and Dan, George and Katie. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for today's jackpot, which currently stands at... £1,250. <laughs> OK, here's how the head-to-head -head works. You are now allowed to confer. Each team will take turns to give me an answer and you'll each have an equal number of turns. The first team that accumulates more than 100 points or the team that goes over 100 by the most will lose. So, as always, to stay in the game, you want to score as few points as possible by saying the answers that the fewest of our 100 people gave. OK, Chris and Dan, you performed best over the first three rounds, so not only do you get to decide whether or not you go first, you also get to choose the topic. And your choice is between... football tournaments <laughs> or international <laughs> politics. Mm. <laughs> That's fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's a tricky one, that. Uh, football we both, tournaments. We both love international politics, don't we? So. Oh, yes. We'll choose football tournaments, I think, please. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and would you like to go first or second? First. First, okay. please. OK. Football tournaments, and you're going to go first. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> right. Let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many FIFA World Cup hosts as they could. Richard. We are essentially looking for any of the 15 nations that have hosted the FIFA World Cup since it began in 1930. The countries that have hosted the World Cup. And on those occasions where there have been co-hosts, we will accept either of them as individual answers. Best of luck. Chris and Dan, your first turn. What do you think? What do you think? First answer, we'll play with Sweden. Remember, if it's an incorrect answer, you will score the maximum okay. of 100 points. First answer, Sweden. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sweden. It's the right answer. Oh, it's good. Look at that. 14. That means 14 of our 100 people said Sweden. Your score after the first answer is 14. George and Katie. We are really dreading this. Uh, we've come up with... Nothing. I'll go for Luxembourg. We're going to go for Luxembourg. We're looking for FIFA World Cup hosts. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Luxembourg. Oh! Bad luck. That means it is an incorrect answer and you score the maximum possible of 100 points. You haven't yet gone over 100. You still get another turn. you just got to hope that Chris and Dan go way over 100 <laughs> with their next answer. OK, we are looking for FIFA World Cup hosts. You've each had one answer. George and Katie are on 100. Chris and Dan are on 14. Chris and Dan, you need to be careful now. Your next answer could take you over 100 points and you could risk leaving the game. Your next answer needs to score you 85 or less to avoid going over 100. Our next answer is going to be Mexico. OK. There is the red line that you have to come below to avoid getting over 100. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mexico. You're in the game still. 
41. That means that 41 of our 100 people said Mexico, and that takes your total up to 55. Richard. Yeah, Mexico, of course, hosted the World Cup twice, very famously in 1970, less famously in 1986. OK. George and Katie, we want a, we want a pointless we answer a point from there. you. Um, for some reason, I think Japan, but I could be completely wrong, but we're going to go with my gut instinct. Let's go with your gut instinct. Japan, you are our high scorers on 100. If you score anything over a pointless, you will, of course, have scored over 100. And you will be leaving the game. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Japan. That's correct. Twenty-six of our 100 people said Japan, and that takes your score up to 126. Well, you've had two turns each, and George and Katie, I'm afraid you've gone over 100 points, yeah. so I'm afraid that means you are off the show. That wasn't your strongest suit, was it? No, yeah. and we knew these guys knew football well, so we were like, <laughs> as long as sport doesn't come up, we'll be OK. Well, such bad luck. Okay. It is always the luck of the draw, and they get tougher and tougher, these rounds, as we get nearer the final. Richard... What other answers were there that they could have gone for? Well, there were no pointless answers, but the, the, the three most obscure, we've already had one from Chris and Dan, which was uh, Sweden, which was the 1958 World Cup won by Brazil. Chile was 62, that was also won by Brazil. And Switzerland was, before that, Switzerland was 54, and that was won by Germany. Yeah, what were the worst answers? Uh, the, most, uh, the most popular answers, which of course are the worst answers in this game, uh, in third it was Germany. Everyone knows that. In second, second most obvious worst answer would have been France. And we can probably guess. George, what do you think was the, the worst answer? UK. England, UK, correct. Thanks, Richard. George and Katie, this was your second and final chance on the show, I'm afraid. You just didn't have that pointless World Cup knowledge, did you? Alas, no. we did not. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, never mind. Thank you so much for playing. It's been great having you on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, <laughs> but for Chris and Dan... It's now time for our pointless final. Well, congratulations, Chris and Dan. It's only your first time on the show, and you've already made it to the end of Pointless. You've fought off the competition, and you've won our coveted Pointless trophy. <laughs> Didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now you've got a chance to win our Pointless jackpot. Today's jackpot stands at... £1,250. <laughs> OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people could think of. We've had one pointless answer today, which you gave, Chris. All you have to do is find another one. OK, first you've got to choose a category from these three options, and you can go for... British sporting legends, American actresses, or prize-winning artists. And I've got to tell you, prize-winning artists has now been on the shelf for five shows, so this is its last chance. <laughs> so, uh, go, for, go, for, go for prize-winning artists. Why yeah, not? <laughs> I don't think prize-winning artists, I think it's got to be top one, isn't it? Yeah. British sporting legends, I think. Fingers British crossed. sporting yeah, think... legends. OK, well, let's find out what the question is. So, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many oh. BBC Sports Personalities of the Year as they could. Richard, fill us in. Yeah, we're essentially looking for anyone who's won the, uh, the BBC's Sports Personality of the Year since it started in 1954. Years where there are joint winners will take each of those people as winners. Well, thanks, Richard. OK, you now have one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £1,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, your 60 seconds start now. All right, what do you think? Okay. I don't think we can go... We don't know too many early ones, do we? No. Did um, Zara Phillips, we s recent, like, maybe three or four years ago, she won it, I think. She has. I, I think she did win it. But will people know it because it's new? Yeah. Uh, Who else we got? Redgrave. Old ones. Redgrave, yeah, he's quite big, though, isn't he? Who's older? Uh, got a about bit of time. tennis. What about someone like, I don't know, one of the women, like Virginia Wade or someone yeah, like that? Yeah, Gamble or someone like that. Yeah. And what about maybe racing drivers, Mansell? Mantle. Damon um, Hill, did he come close? Damon Hill might have done, he won the World Championship, didn't he? So he might have done, like, mid-90s. Um, 
footballers, Michael Owen, did he win it, I think? Beckham's done it, but hit everyone has said it. Everyone will say that, that's too obvious. Um, so we go with the gamble. What about like, old school, really old, I don't know, Roger Bannister or something like that. I don't know if he would have won it, it's probably yeah. too far. I think boxers as well. Boxers, Henry Cooper. Uh, Try that. Go okay, that. Virginia Wade. Three. And Phillips. Phillips. And Phillips. Phillips. One. And your time is okay. up. Right, give me your three answers. Uh, yeah, we're going for Zara Phillips. Yep. Uh, Virginia Wade. Yep. And we'll try and uh, Henry Cooper. This is the third one. You're going to go with Zara Phillips, Virginia Wade, and Henry Cooper. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people went with your first answer, which is Zara Phillips. This has to be a pointless answer for you to win the jackpot of £1,250, OK? Yep. Well, it's correct. This really has to be pointless. That means that 12 of our 100 people said Zara Phillips. Unfortunately, that is not a pointless answer. You now only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. Remember, we are looking for BBC Sports Personalities of the Year. This has to be a pointless answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said your next answer, which was Virginia Wade. If it's an incorrect answer, obviously, you'll only have one more chance to win the jackpot. It's correct. This has to be pointless. For £1,250, down it goes. Oh, and it is! <laughs> How fantastic. Congratulations, you managed to find that all-important pointless answer. That means you go home with a jackpot of £1,250. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. You weren't even sure that was a, no. a, a real answer. <laughs> oh, mate. That was yeah, very good. Yeah. I, liked, I liked the way you were deducing that beforehand. Um, oh, dear, oh, dear. Tell that was what. touch and go, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I didn't think that. I thought that was wrong. It was a complete guess, but... Good on Virginia Wade. We'll send her a little bit of that. No, we won't. No, we won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should think not. So, Richard. What else could they have gone for? Well, Virginia Wade, very good, of course, won in 1977, the same year she won Wimbledon. There were, there were actually 26 pointless answers really? there. There's all sorts, of, uh, all sorts of different ones. Torville and Dean, they both, uh, they both won it. Uh, Virginia Wade, we've seen. Sterling Moss, the racing driver. Gazza, unbelievably won Sports Personality of the Year. 1990. Uh, Torval and Dean there, Steve Cram won it. Nobody, nobody went for Steve Cram. There's an extraordinary list of names. And Henry Cooper wasn't pointless. So it's very lucky that Virginia Wade was. Henry <laughs> Cooper got two points. Two. Oh, that would have been harsh. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Well, you, you got Virginia Wade. That was all you needed. And you win today's jackpot of £1,250. <laughs> very well done to you. Goodbye and thanks for being on the show. It's been thanks great to have nice you. It's been brilliant. <laughs> so Chris and Dan won today's jackpot. Join us tomorrow when we put more obscure knowledge and forgotten facts to the test on Pointless. It's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>